Okay, in part two of DIY carbon fiber intake manifold, we're going to get the carbon fiber put into the molds and uh, we're gonna see how that part turns out. Okay, as we get rolling, we're going to need to get the carbon fiber materials uh, into the mold. I've never done a mold with as deep a draw as this, so it's going to be actually quite difficult to do. No idea how it's all gonna turn out, uh, but hey, Fingers crossed, uh, and let's get let's get to work. With the molds all prepped and cleaned up after the last episode, I'm now applying Free Coat 700 NC as a chemical release agent, and I'm I'm going to apply it to that hole inside of the mold. On the off chance anything bad happens and like a little bit of uh, epoxy leaks into that, but don't apply it to that top flange where the bagging tape materials are going to go. So I I apply it in the same schedule that I always apply it. So there's a north, south, and east, west, and then a 45 degree degree in either direction uh, application and then I bolt the molds together and we're ready to go with getting the carbon fiber placed into the molds. Uh, but first I have to develop the pattern material to actually be sure that uh, everything works. Now any of the little uh, imperfections that are in the mold I'm just applying a little bit more of that a sealing wax, right? That Pelican uh, Nicosil wax into it and then a final application of the 700 and then away we go. All right, so in developing the patterns, I'm using this material that you get at the sewing store for making patterns, right? So I lay it, it doesn't move, it's not gonna move like carbon fiber, but it really works great for getting these patterns made. So now that I've got the rough positioning done, I've uh, gone ahead and started to refine the pattern. So I've just added uh, a little bit of tape to the edges of the pattern where I've needed extra. And I've just uh, grabbed out of my a salvage bin, some pieces of carbon fiber that are the same weight uh, and weave as the material that I'm going to be using. And I've cut out the shapes and then I've, uh, I've refined the shape again. We're using the carbon fiber itself. I've sprayed it with a little bit of glue just to keep it together so it doesn't end up fraying and stretching and going all over the place. Uh, so that's the rough shape that I need to accomplish those back corners. There's no way to get this fabric rolled in. It just is not, it's just going to bunch up and look terrible. So you're going to need some cuts. Uh, you refine those patterns until you can get that carbon to lay uh, really nicely. Again, we're, this is going to be a carbon finished part. Hey, first time. So we do want it to look good. We don't, we don't want all kinds of uh, oddities in the weave. So we'll do the best we can, but I have to tell you, I'm a bit nervous about this. So I'm going to try to lay up just the small piece first, uh, and then I'm going to move on to the more difficult of the two parts, which I think is the big piece. And that may reverse in the end. Hey, sometimes the, the bigger ones are easier because there's more area in the mold uh, to work with, but it's going to be pretty tricky to do. Uh, you know, once you've got it curled in, then this has got to curve around right in a specific shape so that all of those points are they're going to locations in the mold uh, thankfully the two-piece mold is actually giving me a nice look at where the center line is so that's going to make that a little better all right so let's get this going Okay, now we're going to start loading the mold. So just a little spritz of the FiberTech MT1 goes into the mold to hold the carbon fabric in place while I'm working on it. Uh, and then I'm trying to get it into the mold. And as I predicted at the start, the smaller of the two molds is harder to lay. And you've noticed I've just taken that carbon fiber back out of the mold and put it back in. But if you use the glue on the carbon in the, you know, as you're preparing it, it will hold together, but you have to be super careful to not destroy the weave when you're doing that particular trick. Anyway, six layers of carbon fiber are going in here. This is a, you know, a relatively common two by two twill material at around uh, six ounces or about 200 grams per square meter. So it's, it's, it's as common as uh, the day is long, this particular material. Although uh, this was a seconds material from Composite Envisions, and it was a very nice fabric to work with. The twill was uh, tightly woven, which made it a lot easier to handle. 
the link will be in the description for that particular material. So uh, anyway, so I, I'm, I'm putting it in and, and what you, you kind of can't see in the stop motion is all the cuts that I put in on the back of this part of the plenum. I'm adding there. I just did it. I just added a, a layer that overlaps all of the cuts. Uh, and in the end, I had uh, nine or ten layers of carbon fiber back there which actually ended up causing a bit of a problem, but it sure didn't cause a problem for strength in that location, I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's absolutely bull strong. All right, well, that was a little bit hairy to get done, but I got it done. I'm actually pretty happy with the way that the carbon has laid in there. Um, the weave matters. It's a small detail, but every small detail counts. This is the sixth layer. Uh, there's six layers of carbon. Of course, this back corner here where I've made the cuts, I've added uh, some extra material in there just to be 100% sure that everything's going to be just fine. And uh, when the sixth layer comes out as nice as that, you know, I'm pretty happy. So again, onward, upward. Um, all right, so now the bagging materials are going to go on and we're going to get that part finished up. Peel ply application comes first. So initially I wasn't exactly sure how to do this. So I took my time and cleaned all the glue off the edges of the mold and uh, applied the, the bagging tape as I always do around the corners. And I've got some one inch wide tape that I've had in my collection here for a little while. And I decided to use it on this project for, for no reason. I mean, I didn't really need it. It just was really simple to work with. So I took that middle section of the mold where uh, the curve is easy and I applied the peel ply into that. And then everything else, you have to apply the peel ply so that it's sitting right on the fabric. You do not want it sitting off the fabric. Uh, it won't stretch, it's nylon. Uh, so it's not gonna stretch into where, you, you know, it's not gonna conform to the mold. So cut all the darts in it and get it going. Then you work out your flow uh, mesh. So I'm just using the red flow mesh. Uh, it's an AirTech product, it worked great. And you just work it out across and then of course you leave your, you know, don't put your flow mesh all the way to the vacuum side or you'll just race the epoxy straight across. Uh, and then look at the size of that bag. It's absolutely enormous uh, relative to the size of the mold. But this is what I figured would work. So attach the corners first when you're putting the bagging materials on. And then I've, I've computed where my pleats should go. So I'm doing around three pleats per side. And I like, I'm like putting them in right so the pleat line will fall directly into uh, the mold. So I'm doing the best I can, again, to match the uh, the perimeter of the mold to the perimeter of the bagging material. Uh, you know, you fluff it up lots and, and look at where it's it's got to go, and then you put the tape in. I, I have another partial video done on how to do uh, bagging, so I, I should probably get around to getting that stuff released. Uh, at some point in time in the very near future, I will, I'll throw that up for, for anyone who's interested in watching. Uh, it's a difficult thing to learn, but there you go. First time I put the vacuum on it, sucks right down you kind of know when you're making these uh when you're bagging i sort of get a feel for it now that oh yeah this is a good one you know like i'm not gonna have any problems getting this to seal i just you know one pass around the outside edge and mostly what i'm doing there is repositioning the bag inside the mold uh to make sure that everything is going to work all right so the epoxy as you just saw in the video is rtm 3121 and it's a high temperature and high impact uh, epoxy. I figured it was the right epoxy for this job. But when uh, it's very different from the epoxies that I've used before, because it goes off quite quickly. So I'm trying to match the flow rate. So you want to infuse as slowly as you can, uh, but and still have the uh, epoxy be, you know, you don't want to have any problems. Uh, but the epoxy will go off in the pot in about an hour, 60 minutes, and it took 45 minutes for me to get it across the mold because of the various layers and how fast I was infusing. So that's what you want. You want to try to time those two things up. Uh, and if you thought that last bag was outrageously huge, look at the size of this monstrosity. And this is, uh, it ended up being about as, uh, it, you know, the, the sizing was great. Uh, so you need all of that bag. Like you'd think you didn't need it, but it's that the mold is that deep. Uh, and again, I mean, for everybody that says, well, you know, Easy Composites has a video on uh, making a plenum, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure they do. But they're, you know, you got an autoclave. That's what they're using pre-preg in an autoclave. 
Uh, I'm just a guy in my garage. So uh, here, here we are. If you're going to try to do this, this is this is the technology you need to master. You don't need to be using prepreg and an autoclave. I mean, if you got an autoclave, <laughs> fill your boots. Uh, but for those of us that don't, there you go. That bag was perfect again, right? As soon as I vacuum it down. Then I release the vacuum, reset the bag so that it's pushing exactly where I want it to push. And then I get going and get the infusion started. And this actually another 45 minute infusion. It infused just perfectly. Um, I'm I'm terrified of it, so I'm marking it with a sharpie as I go, just so that I'm you know the flow is slow, but I don't want the flow to be too slow and not make it to the end by the time the epoxy actually starts to kick. Okay, as always, it's the next day, uh, and I've been dying all day to get around to actually taking the bagging materials off these and finding out how we did. All right, so let's get going on the first mold. So the first one that we did was that little sort of piece that's going to go underneath the front of the manifold. I didn't do so well at the estimating of the uh, epoxy for this one. It was a little tricky actually, just um, generally the, the mold is quite small. So that made the prediction of how much uh, epoxy was gonna be needed was a little bit, um, a little bit off from where I normally am. Uh, this was about two and a half times the weight of the fiber. Usually on a bigger mold, it's more like about 1.3 because there's so much more carbon uh, than there is mold. Anyway, just a little tip. seems to be coming off the mold nicely. Tell us it's fun. That's so weird. It's all this stuff on the inside. It's stuck in there, but good. Right down to the peel hole. That's not supposed to be it. Oh, it's coming. All right. Okay, we're gonna be okay here, I think. Um, I need pliers, folks, I need pliers. Oh, it's coming. It just looks like it's totally part of the composite, but it's peeling it off. happy with myself there this one's just for all those people all winter who've told me oh you gotta have the carbon fiber look yeah where was the fun in that Fun yet to come, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, that area there doesn't look all that great. Oh, it's because there's no carbon there. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh! Ah, giant flaw. Shoot. 
Um, of course, it's on the upside. Oh no, it's in the area that I'm cutting for the flange. Oh, I may have got lucky. Rather be lucky than good. How does that look? To me, that looks pretty darn nice. Uh, it's not perfect up here. That's on the bottom side, that's on the top side. I think with a little sanding and a little clear application though, we're gonna be okay. A lot of this is area that is waste. Again, I made the plug larger than it needs to be, so I have areas where I can cut and trim uh, down to the part that I actually need, which is this little bit in here. That looks pretty good though. Falling is the best noise in vacuum infusion. That's the best noise. Okay, so this has been under vacuum for a full day. Uh, not lost anything through my catch can. I will put that catch can video up. I do have one made. A little how-to on how to build one of those. A whole lot better on the epoxy estimation on the second one. Uh, it is a little bit larger mold, so it's a little easier to guess. I did have to add a little bit extra into the mix from my, I was going with a 1.5. I ended up at about 1.7, right? The, uh, the carbon weight, and you can see uh, it's basically nothing but the thinnest of coating on the bottom of the pail. It, uh, you know, it tipped over, it's just up to the inlet. So that's basically uh, exactly where you want to be when you're making these parts. You're not wasting epoxy. I mean, I've got a gallon of this stuff. I'm making one manifold. Uh, well, I haven't made the manifold yet, have I now, right? So. Except when it's all done, go away. All right. Just the easiest release ever. That's kind of too cool not to take a picture of it, to be honest with you. Okay, and that's that's how I got that seal so nice. So I put the filleting wax all the way around the perimeter of the mold, just a little bit, and then squeeze that in and that gave me the good seal. So, not the last tip, but hopefully another one that's helpful. Jeez, that looks good. Let's get it out of there. Woo! Look at that! Just to show you I'm not faking it. That is absolutely perfect. The fabric lay is just... Oh my word. <laughs> Man, I can't wait for this thing to make turbo noises. Okay, I'm gonna pull you off the tripod. I'm gonna give you a quick look at it. So the objective with all of this stuff is to get your fabric lays really nice, right? You don't want wrinkles. You don't want fabric that's going all over the place. It has to be neat. It's got to be tidy. Here's the back side of it. Where I had to do the the cutting. And that's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Couldn't have asked for any better. 
So with a certain amount of enthusiasm having those things come out of the mold, it's now time to get the parts trimmed up and get back to work. So you get a minute to sort of feel good about yourself and then uh, on you go with the mess. So get the PPE on uh, for heaven's sake. And then I'm, I'm trying with the vacuum here, folks, but I know this isn't the best setup in the world. Uh, it does actually vacuum up probably about 80 or 90%. I, I try my hardest, but it's super tough to do. Uh, and they... Um, those sanding blocks uh, that you get, they're out of the UK. They're a permagrit sanding block. They're just awesome for doing this uh, this kind of work. So I'm just getting everything, all the details touched up and all the parts put together. Now, I've never had those two parts together before. And I, I know from past experience that it's going to need a little bit of sanding in order for it to fit nicely. But I'm trying to make it uh, just slide together perfectly. And I was absolutely, I, you know, I'm still stunned to this day. At, uh, at how well that worked, given that, you know, I just used a 3D printed uh, plug and my computer to develop these parts. And that's it. So in they go just for the first test fitting onto the base of the plenum. Okay, so after a lot of sanding and fitting, we're now ready to get the two parts glued together. So I've dug out the uh, plenum base. So let me pull that off. Uh, so the plenum base is a CNC machine part that I designed. It's got a double wall construction for the glue flange. Just trying to show that to you. I may just zoom in on it later. Uh, okay, so happy enough with how the parts finished up. Uh, so you can see I've had to do quite a bit of sort of sanding and fitting in order to get this to work. And you can see parts actually fit pretty nicely together. Right, there is going to be a very subtle little black line that's going to go up and around the corner here. I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, uh, I made it in two parts. I'm not trying to fool anybody that I didn't, so that's fine. Now the gap's a little worse on the back side, um, but it's on the back side, so I got lucky there. And that's just simply I lost the registration line on the mold, uh, or on the molded part, as to where I was to cut that line. So it didn't come out the way I wanted, but uh, I don't have to go back to the drawing board for it, and that's all that really matters. So we're gonna set those two parts together, set them in, and then little flaws like the little blister here at the bottom, this is all getting cut off anyway. So I'm gonna, once they're, they're adhered, I'm going to take off about the bottom uh, 10 mil just to straighten that whole flange out and decrease the volume of the plenum just a bit. So I'm using the uh, ProSet again, uh, ADV175 and ADV275 is the, is the epoxy adhesive. Uh, it's been a really good epoxy adhesive for me so far. So it's worked out really well. And then that little edge gap here that's going to need to be filled, I'm going to use the RDR paste in order to uh, fill and fare that and once I get it sanded. Okay, so uh, now it's time to apply the adhesive and stick the two parts together. No time like the present. Okay, so we just wanna make sure the fibers are fully wetted out. It is a green color because it's a quality control product. Make sure it's properly mixed. There's a dye in it. Um, it doesn't have to be massively thick. I do have a really big glue flange and once these are stuck together uh, I will be doing some work on the inside. So you can see that I've sanded and prepped the surface as well just to make sure it's keyed. I also did the same on the back side of the main plenum part. Um, so just Gets it a nice keying, and I didn't need as much. I mean, I had a massive glue flange in here. And uh, once it's cut out, I'll show you the other part here in a sec. I'm kind of a bit busy doing a little bit of glue in here. And I'm trying, actually I should, I'm gonna wipe it off the bottom. <laughs> I'm trying not to get it actually on that bottom edge. I'm holding it apart when I put it together. I get a good squish. Okay, let me carefully set it into on base. 
So when the adhesive is set, uh, I carefully take the parts apart and then I'm working on the fit to get these into the plenum and get all the pieces fit nicely. Okay, so after uh, many hours of sanding, uh, which I did not record, so sorry, I know you missed it, but I didn't record all the sanding that I had to do, but uh, happy with how everything has turned out. There were a few flaws, a few mistakes, and we still have a little ways to go. So I still have to finish the sanding on the areas uh, between the joint to the two parts. Again, there's a really nice big lap joint in here. It's probably 40 millimeters wide. Uh, so that should be plenty of glue area to hold this thing together. And I mean, it's good and stiff. I really Really, I have no idea if this is going to work, but if I blow this manifold apart, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a smile on my face when I do it, and we're going to try again. But in the meantime, we're going to hope that this particular effort does work. So one of the tricks to, to getting these together effectively was actually to, I, I did have to sand the carbon. I mean, it wasn't perfect. Uh, you know, it's just me the first time in the garage, right, doing the best I can. Uh, but you can see there the backside was a little bit uh, a little bit thick and I did add nine layers of carbon fiber I think total to that back edge so uh, yeah a little uh, overdid it just a little bit there and I have a tight tolerance here on the plenum that I designed so I only gave myself two millimeters uh, so the the carbon has to be two millimeters so I'm just trying to say sand your carbon to hit two millimeters and then sand the aluminum to get the rest right to get the fit that you want and as you can see at least I won't. That's now the fit that I want, right? I just want it to pop. I'm not fighting it. It's actually got some room in there. Uh, the epoxy needs some place to be, and I'm currently doing research, uh, unfortunately, as we speak, uh, trying to figure out. I've got some structural epoxy uh, coming, so Loctite High Soul 9394 is the product we're going to use to uh, get this stuck together. And I'm just trying to figure out you know, what do I have to do to make this last long term? It's not going to be experiencing salt water and things like that. So it's pretty unlikely that I'm going to have the sort of galvanic corrosion everyone talks about. But anyway, there it is. Same process exactly for the throttle body adapter, right? Uh, you won't have seen it in the stop motion. I hand sanded uh, with my linisher that uh, the 20 mil uh, glue flange so that it fit. Now, when I designed the part, I left that flange still plenty thick. It's not like it turned into tin foil or anything. It's still, uh, it's still three, three mil thick. So lots of material there. But again, I just want that to fit. It's not gonna fall out just of its own accord. So it goes in nicely, leaving a gap for the adhesive to do its work. Okay, you don't wanna have your parts, when you're using adhesives, you don't wanna have your parts so tight that the adhesive is uh, squeezed out. Okay, so here's the carbon fiber, uh, the base plenum part uh, completely done, right? So we are going to adhere these two parts in. Now I have to get going on the rest of it. So in part three, I will be welding on the runners and getting those welded to the flange, then uh, getting out all those parts cleaned up and get them sent in for coating. Okay, thank you once again for joining me on the big adventure here. This has been a fun project, super challenging. It's not easy. I spent most every night this week out here working on that manifold in order to get those fits nice. Uh, I wore my finger, my thumb right off uh, with the 80 with the 80 grit. It just ripped all my skin right off. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on the adventure, and we'll catch you on the next episode.